Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks, and today's project is these cool pair of boots. These are custom made, and the quality is right on right on point. I think they're beautiful. Uh, they're made by. Let's see if I can find. J. L. Covington. It's got a nice high arch. It's got double wood pegs on each side. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful boot. Now, boots are not really my my specialty. Um, I do I do mainly dress shoes um, when it comes to footwear. Um, but occasionally, I have a handful of customers who who uh, bring me boots and send me boots. This was sent by mail. Uh, this is a $460 job. We're going to do JR Full Soles Rubber Heels um, and um, clean condition as usual and um, to make it look much, much better than what it is now. I'd say he's got his money's worth out of him, right? A nice hole in the middle there. So uh, once they get done, it'll add many, many years of life to it. All right, let's get started. Here goes nothing. <laughs> What I'd like to do is just kind of score the heel base, just to kind of release that glue. On the edges there. Ah, man. Now these heel top lifts, okay, have washers in them. What happens is when you nail it, the washer pushes the top lift down to the, to the base of the boot. Wow, this is gonna be a chore to remove, I can tell. Might not come up in one piece. built like a tank it's kind of uh, difficult to take apart at times like this guy is here wow look at this So basically, this was kind of built up in layers, added wood pegs to it instead of nails. What happens, you wet the wood pegs down, you poke a hole into the leather, you push the wood peg in, and as it dries, it expands, and it holds everything together. That's what this gentleman did. He put wood pegs all the way around. Wow, this is kind of cool. Very cool boots. I like it. I'll have to look into this person. It's neat, very neat. See, there's no nails involved back here. It's all wood pegs. Sometimes when you remove it, the last comes out with it, like that. Whoa! You don't want to drop that on your toes, man. No siree, Bob. I mean, I am wearing boots, but not steel toe boots, you know? You can drop the plastic container on the floor, but not the metal last. Guy's got a big foot too.
Now usually I just kind of run my knife right along the edge of that welt and the sole. And it comes off real easily. But not this bad boy. She is on there. All right, let's continue. Man, there's a lot of wood pegs on this boot. Man. Maybe wood pegs were on sale that day. They're on a special. Yeah, but all joking aside, this is a nice pair of boots. So this leather piece was basically like the shank cover. Okay. And you got your shank in the middle, stitched together. This is a hold fast. Basically, unlike production jobs, where you had a gemming on the side, that fabric that the welt and the fabric and the footbed are stitched to, this is the actual footbed, okay? They cut the piece of leather on the side, they, not, they open it up and then sneak, you know, tuck in the... Stitches right in that little line right there. So basically that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a new welt on it. Okay. We're going to reuse this piece. This is, this is, there's nothing wrong with this piece. We're just going to clean it up a little bit, re-glue it, put it back where it, where it was. Then we can start reconstructing the sole for it. All right, let's continue. Now, while we got these footbeds apart, okay, it's a good time to inspect the insides, make sure everything is okay. So while we got that open, we're gonna just kind of wipe things down. And then we're gonna condition those areas. Because it's very difficult to get inside, you know, this deep when the boot is already made, obviously. So unfortunately, you know, over time, the lining or the footbed start dry rotting and you're going to get tears in the lining here on the sides of the toes because you can't really condition those areas okay and you know our our feet do perspire and our our perspiration has salt in it and salt over time damages the leather so while we got it open we're going to go ahead and wipe it down with a little bit of a little bit of turpentine, okay. Lining is in pretty good shape. Footbed's not bad shape. We're gonna get some big four, okay. We'll just we'll just coat it up. Uh, you know, most guys don't don't do stuff like this. 
Well, most guys don't take it apart this depth, so that's a little in, in defense of their argument, I guess. But if you do take it apart, it's a good idea to kind of just give it a good condition or bath. And that's really about it. Let the sucker sit. We come back. We're gonna. I just have to wake up. We're gonna come back. I gotta go wash my hands now. I'm gonna come back and put the welt on and continue with this project. Let's continue. <clears throat> now I wasn't going to replace the welt on these boots but once I took it apart I cut into the welt okay now mistakes do happen unfortunately it's it you know, it happens. So, so instead of patching that little area, I figured, you know what, just take the welt off. It's okay. We've done that in the past before. They're replacing welt. It's nothing, nothing a big deal. It's just that it's a little bit more work, you know, doing that. And sometimes the price reflects the work that you're going to do, which the price didn't include the welt but it's okay it's not a big deal now in hindsight I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that happened because I'm I don't know it's I'm, I'm a little bit more at ease knowing that it'll have, it'll have a new welt and whenever when we go ahead and restitch the sole you know, most of the time we restitch it on the same holes, but sometimes it misses it. And with boots, it's right in your face. You can't really, you can't really hide it when you're wearing it. Especially, you got that top view. You see the stitches right there. If one stitch is off, then it just it just doesn't look good at all. Especially when you have a light color welt. Now we're lucky here. This is black welt, right? And black stitches. Some boots will have a light color welt and white stitches. Man, there is no hiding anything when you're doing white stitches. I remember one time I was, I was doing a pair of, um, pair of boots. I, I think they were, I think they were elephant skin. I can't remember. And it had a light color stitch and white, light color welt with a white stitch. And sure enough, my stitcher, or I should say me, it was operator air probably, you know, and. Um, and like the row did not the stitch the stitch on the welt didn't look straight it was kind of like curving a little look at that it was drunk while i was stitching you know and uh sure enough I, I just i hated it i hated that look i just i kept that boot for like a month because i was debating whether i should try to straighten the stitch out or or you know make it look a little better Man, I just, I was, I was like, you know what, screw this. I took the sole off and re-welted it and, and re-stitched it. So with white stitches, you can't, there's not much, there's not much there to hide. You can't hide a white stitch. It's, it's, it's impossible to hide the flaws in a white stitch. So kind of glad that we replaced that. It's okay. So you, mistakes happen. You know it but you just have to resolve them you know and it wasn't a mistake where 
you know, it was uh, not fixable. So I'm glad I kind of, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of glad it happened that I got to replace the welt. So that's what we're doing now. We are stitching the welt. This is called a jerk needle. People get a kick out of me saying, no, it's not a jerk holding a needle. It's a jerk needle. It's basically, <clears throat> it's a needle with a hook at the end. You guys see the hook? You poke it through. And we're gonna make sure that we're going in the same holes as what they had before, okay? You don't wanna create new holes. Unless you have to, but most of the time you don't have to. And push the needle through, hook this thread onto that, and you pull it through, and you take the other thread, put it through the loop, and now you've got two of them connected, and you pull it real tight. <coughs> and now there are different methods of stitching a welt on. There's one method where you have two needles at each, you know, at the end of the, each thread. I'm wetting this down, by the way, just to soften it up. It's a um, little um, uh, stretching solution, rubbing alcohol and water mixed together. Anyway, you take the two needles, saddle stitch, I believe it's called, and you just go like figure eights. Okay, tighten it as you go along. There's, there's different ways of doing it. I've been doing it like this for a while now, and so far so good. With that, you've got to you've got to open up a hole with an awl. Awl is basically basically it's a little tool with a sharp edge. You just kind of pierce it through so the needles needle will go through easily. But I, I, you know, I do it this way. Some people like doing it the other way. Some people like doing it this way. Cool. All right, let's continue. Now we've got the welt on the cork, the midsection there. This piece right here is what's going to help get the fiddle back. We call this the fiddle back waist. Okay, see how there's a hump in the middle there? kind of like this. They call that the fiddle back waist. And also on on the sole, we sanded the areas here to kind of soften that up just a little bit so they kind of take shape to that. Okay. We dye the edges here, okay, because there's no welt there, all right? So when the sole goes down, all right, let's see. So when the when the boot goes on the sole like that, you don't see any light color edges on the inside of the boot, right? It's all black now. Okay, that's the reason for that's the reason for dyeing that that section black. I'm gonna go into my volcano pot or my glue pot, I should say. <laughs> People love that that glue pot. It looks like a volcano, they say. Well, sometimes when it's like built up of glue that's kind of like falling apart on the sides, which which I hate that. That's like a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it. So sometimes I clean it up. And besides, if you have, if you have, for example, like when you're removing the glue, right, from the from the pot and it gets on the edges like that, and you put your brush down, now all of a sudden this kind of seals it in place and it's hard to pull it up you know and then then you got to hold the pot and then and then pull the brush out which which is not good i mean i do that sometimes at night for example right it will put a little glue around the edges so when you close when you put the brush in and uh it gets a little tight seal so it doesn't get that much air into it for the glue to dry but normal normal day you know normal work they I try to not to keep anything on that edge edge of the glue pot because I don't want to fight with it trying to remove the brush out of the way 
Now you don't have to cake this glue on, okay? Right now I'm using Masters All-Purpose Cement. It works for me. There are others on the market, but this works for me. I'm happy with it. It's quick drying cement, all-purpose cement. We'll let that sit for a couple of minutes, and then we'll come back and you all know what time it is after we come back. It's hammer time. <laughs> all right, let's continue. <laughs> of course, it would have to be reversed, crying out loud. Turn around. God, man. Why don't you? Uh, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> it's hammer time. All right, that's enough of that crap. Get out of here. Hang in the front of my. Ooh, don't want to drop that. Oh no, no, sorry, Bob. We don't want to break that again. All right. Bend that a little bit like that, so it can kind of relax at the waist. Make sure the logo's about center. About center. It's not the end of the world if it's not, but you know, OCD kicks in, and sometimes if it's not centered, you want to start the whole job over again. Oh, that's me hanging, hitting the, hitting the light. All right, that looks really good. Nice. Okay. Okay. Now sometimes what people will do, they'll hammer this, right? It curves, like, like the toe curves up again. Like, so if you hammer this down, oh, I'm just dropping everything today. If you hammer the sole down too much and, and then you're gonna get like a curve like that, right? I don't like that. It's kind of good to have because the foot is not flat. It, it curves, you see how it's curved here? It curves automatically, but when it's new, I like to have that that welt and the sole kind of straight. So I pull the toe up a little bit when I'm hammering it, instead of vice versa, push the sole down. So to me, it just gives that much better, much better look on the side. And over time, when the customer wears it. They'll bend that back. See how it's kind of nice. Got a nice curve like that instead of it, instead of it kind of kinking up. Yeah, that's what I don't like. So now what we're gonna do? Let's hammer the welt on real quick. And I'm gonna put this in some sort of a homemade uh, press. Now we want we want this shape to kind of stay down, right? Now, there are there are people who make straps like this. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. <coughs> they make a small little strap. They they push down with their foot to kind of press this down like that, right? Well, this I just have a a little. What you call it here? Okay. And it's going underneath the. It's going underneath the last. And it's probably an overkill, but I want that shape to stay there. Let me position that a little better. I'll just leave this here for it to dry. There she be. Okay, we're just gonna let that sit. Not too long, maybe maybe a half hour or whatever until that leather is nice and dry. Okay, you guys can see that? Cool, we'll let that sit for a bit. And when it dries, it gives it that nice. Now we're still gonna sand it a little bit on the surface to give it that nice, 
nice pronounced fiddle shape, but this will definitely help start the process. Let's continue. See, these bobbins weren't made for this machine, right? And they don't have these. and uniform stitch that's what we want perfect all right let's continue Take a little bit of glue. We'll use some thinner. Thin out the glue. Okay. I'm going to put some pegs in there. These are wood pegs. Well, that's going to absorb a little bit. with the glue and the thinner. Let's move that piece out of underneath there. Don't need that anymore. So the idea behind this is that usually the wood pegs are, are wet. And when they dry, they expand. You you know when they're wet, you put them in the in the slots. When they dry, they expand and then they hold very well.
know, it looks messy now, but once it gets sanded and dyed, it'll look good. All right, let's continue. You know, sometimes I just, I get bored sometimes. And I think to myself, what can I do to create more work for myself? Not like more work, like more projects, like more work on the particular job I'm working on. Eh, I've got nothing better to do. So I had a wonderful idea of putting his initials on the boot. Hey, what a great idea. I just got to do it now. Anyway, I did it on one of them. So what I thought of the let me try that again. So his initials are DM. Okay. I printed out some some. Uh, well, except for the top piece, I didn't like that top little little thingamajiggle there. So I printed these out. I glue it on the sole. I kind of poke holes. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, I got, I got nothing better to do. Hey, what the hell? Jesus Christ. There goes the compressor. Anyhow, anywho, anywhere. So, all right, let's continue. This is a Vibram cowboy heel. These have the washers inside, okay? Now, there's an ongoing discussion in our trade that you don't need to put glue on there. You're wasting your time putting glue because the nails will hold on to it. This is gonna trigger somebody. Hey man, why are you putting glue on there when you don't have to put glue because that glue doesn't hold anything anyway? Oh, not the viewers. Some of my, some of my cobbler peeps. But I like to glue it anyway. Just to trigger them. <laughs> Let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. Now, it didn't turn out too bad. Well, it turned out okay, I think. I still have to, I still have to wax a little bit just to give it that little luster, but majority of the work is done. Okay, JR Souls, Vibram Heels, put the initials. Now, the initials weren't part of it. He doesn't know anything about this. He'll know when he's see the video, I guess. He watches. He's a YouTube fan too, which is cool. I like that. So it turned out pretty good. And um, a little bit of mistake that that happened with the welt. You know, it happens. Unfortunately, it's nothing that I cannot undo and make it better. So I'm kind of I'm kind of happy that that we put a new welt on. It just gives it a more unique, not unique, more finished look. You know, because most of the time we can stitch on the same channel, same holes, but. Sometimes, you know, it happens. I, like I explained to you guys, you know, I'd, I'd hate for to do all that work and not be, not be, you know, to what I want it to be, you know? Besides, I'm not a, I mean, I've done boots before, don't get me wrong, but it's not my specialty, okay? 
Um, I got friends of mine in Georgia, um, Snellville Shoe Repair, Snellville, Georgia, Georgia. Okay, Scott and uh, Zane Maddox, they call them the Maddox team. They're good friends of mine. It's father and son. Scott's the dad, Zane's the father, Zane's the son. And that's all they do. It's like mainly they do boots, okay, cowboy boots. As much as I do dress shoes, they do boots. And then vice versa, you know. I do less cowboy boots, they do less shoes. So, you know, people like that, you know, who, who are into the boots every day, day in and day out, they work on boots. And um, and to me, you know, if the opportunity comes, I'm not going to say no, obviously, it's work, you know. But um, again, it's just not it's just not my specialty. But, um, but I think he turned out good. I'm happy with him. All right, so if you guys have any questions, please email me, bedos at yahoo.com. Subscribe, share whatever you want to do, comment. And uh, we've got a couple of, uh, if I can talk. All right, let me try that again. We've got a couple of more projects coming up. We've got a, we've got to do that um, Carmina shoes. Um, I've got a couple of bags, some um, Gucci bags, some Louis Vuitton bags. Um, we've got a, I think we've got a, we've got like a, a big doctor's bag. We're still kind of negotiating, you know. Um, it's a beautiful piece that's got uh, that's got some work to be done to it and I think that's going to be a good project to watch um, so there's there's a bunch of stuff to be done don't worry there's not there 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 are plenty plenty of projects to do and videotape to show you guys what can be done like before and afters okay all right thank you again and uh, we'll see you guys on the next project take care